So, dann würde ich sagen, wir fangen an. Ist das Mikrofon wirklich an? Gut. Um, so much in German, I will now speak in English. Uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome uh, from me at the German Marshall Fund and a very warm welcome particular to our speakers today, Mr. Oppermann and Mr. Trojanowski, who I will introduce to you in a minute. Um, this is part of the transatlantic talk series that we have started in Washington about two years ago and that we brought to Berlin last year. The idea behind the transatlantic talks is to have an on the record conversation between a German policymaker and an American journalist or expert or a German journalist or expert and an American policymaker. These talks are on the record, live streamed as you see and we will al also publish a summary um, on our website. Some of you may have heard yesterday's news report that the German Telekom has been providing the German intelligence service with electronic transit data. That is data that are not, that didn't origin in Germany and that have, don't have Germany as the destination. Apparently this has been going on since 2004 and included data transmitted by email, telephone and fax. And apparently these data were shared with the NSA. This is only the latest twist in an increasingly complex story that has been unfolding since 2013 when Edward Snowden revealed um, the activities of the National Security Agency. Um. However, we have not invited Mr. Oppermann and Mr. Trojanowski to talk about uh, interagency cooperation um, or intelligence cooperation. We have invited them to discuss U.S.-German relations, broader trends in U.S.-German relations, first among themselves and then with all of you. As was mentioned in the invitation, opinion polls show that German trust in the United States has dropped significantly since the Snowden revelations. And um, more people than before the crisis started want a Germany that is more independent from the United States. We don't know, of course, what it means, what do people mean when they talk about greater independence, nor do we know if these are deep convictions or just reflect a short-term disappointment with US policies. But they we do know that they have an impact on other transatlantic issues, such as TTIP, the Trade and Investment Partnership, but also attitudes toward the Russia and the Ukraine crisis. We are very proud um, that Thomas Oppermann has agreed to join us today. Most of you will know him. He has joined the uh, Bundestag in 2005. He's the chairman of the SPD parliamentary group and held before that many posts in the party but also in the German parliament. What fewer people know is that he has also spent two years in the United States. Mm -hmm. He was there in 1976 to 1978 uh, as a volunteer of the um, German Action Reconciliation Service for Peace, Aktion, Sühnezeichen, Friedensdienste, and he served in Washington and New York. So very warm welcome to you, Mr. Oppermann. Very warm welcome also to Anton Trojanowski. He is the Berlin correspondent, uh, correspondent of the Wall Street Journal. Um, he focuses on German foreign policy, but also the Russia-Ukraine crisis, and spent five years with the journal in Washington and New York. Anton will moderate the conversation. Very warm welcome to you. Thank you very much, and over to you. Thank you. So thank you, Heike, for having me. Um, like you said, uh, this discussion of US-German uh, relations in the age of Snowden, I think, has now turned into uh, being a lot more current than uh, we expected when we were first setting this up a couple months ago. Um, it's been uh, two years now almost since Ed Snowden first started leaking uh, documents about U.S. surveillance around the world, and the issue uh, remains uh, one of the highest profile uh, political topics here in Germany, perhaps more so than in any other country in the world. Um, and just in the last few weeks, the debate, as you said, has reached an even higher pitch with allegations and disclosures that the German intelligence service, the BND, may have helped the NSA in uh, spying on, a, on European targets. Uh, one indication, I was looking it up today, one indication of how 
uh, much Germany is focused on this issue, uh, the letters NSA appeared in 39 page one stories in uh, Germany's two leading broadsheet dailies, uh, the FAZ and the Süddeutsche, in the last month, which is more than the total uh, a number of articles about the NSA on page one of the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, and the Washington Post in all of 2015. Um, uh, you know, in another, in another sign, and all of us here saw the Spiegel cover a few weeks ago that said simply the betrayal and had Angela Merkel and uh, two other German politicians, um, German, German officials on it. Uh, the Spiegel called the issue of NSA surveillance and possible uh, uh, German help the greatest political scandal of our time. And now the question is whether the government will allow members of parliament to see a list of who exactly the BND uh, was spying on. So this remains uh, uh, very much a um, current issue. Uh, and also, it's become more and more uh, an issue that uh, um, has, a, uh, has an impact on the relationship with the US. Over the weekend, the head of your party, Vice Chancellor Sigmar Gabriel, said, we are friends and partners of the Americans on equal footing. We are neither immature nor order takers. Yasmin Fahimi, the general secretary of the SPD, said we must not allow ourselves to be made vassals of the United States. So I've found myself, as, as a journalist covering this, that it's fairly difficult to explain um, this issue to US uh, to a U.S. audience that obviously has a different perspective on, on the work of intelligence agencies than uh, people in Germany do. So, Mr. Oppermann, I, th I thought my first question to you would be very broad, which is uh, explain to us, and maybe especially the people watching on the live stream in Washington and elsewhere in the U.S., why are the Germans so upset? Well, <clears throat> I believe that um, there's a lot of concern in Germany among German people about the activities of uh, surveillance agencies, about uh, uh, activities of intelligence organizations that has to do with our history. The East Germans were controlled by uh, intelligence uh, agencies uh, and um, the West Germans, uh, of course, uh, remind um, uh, remember the Nazi time when we had secret uh, intelligence organizations. So <clears throat> it is part of the German understanding of freedom to um, not have uh, intelligence agencies that are empowered to, uh, to uh, control or to survey people without any limitation. Um, uh, I think that is uh, uh, something specific about the German understanding of uh, freedom and liberty, uh, but it is also a matter of um, uh, how do we, um, uh, what kind of partnership do we have? Uh, is it an equal, are we equal partners? Um, uh, can we um, find uh, arrangements about uh, these questions in according uh, with our constitution and our law. Uh, we did have that debate uh, about uh, a no spy agreement. And um, spying on friends is uh, something that we think is a problem. At least uh, we have to have certain rules about that. Uh, but the problem is that we not even do have a common understanding of the problem. As you pointed out, in the United States, people uh, are also sensitive uh, uh, about um, uh, surveillance, of course, but uh, not uh, in, in a way uh, uh, we are in Germany. <coughs> so first of all, what we have to do is uh, uh, we, uh, we have that cyber talk between the two governments. We have to create um, a joint understanding of the problem. And then we can talk about how we can deal with that problem. We must deal with that problem because Germany and the United States enjoy a very close friendship for almost seven decades now. Uh, we, uh, we are grateful as Germans that the US helped us to, to return to the international community after the Nazi period, after World War II. 
we are uh, uh, grateful uh, because of the Marshall Fund that uh, helped Germany to build up its economy. And, uh, and the US was very helpful when uh, uh, we had the unification, the reunification of the two Germanys. Not mm -hmm. all of our friends and neighbors uh, were so uh, strongly supportive uh, in, that era, in that era. So uh, this friendship, uh, the United States is the most important partner uh, outside of the European Union for Germany. Uh, and uh, I think vice versa, the US also has a strong partner, an important partner in, 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 in Europe, in Germany. Uh, and we have to keep up our friendship and we have to solve the problems that are in the way of this friendship. So you mentioned the, 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 the word equal partner, that Germany needs to be seen as an equal partner uh, to the US. And that's, uh, that's an expression that we're hearing a lot these days in, in German politics. What exactly does that mean? And, and how, does, how do you see this uh, uh, whole NSA um, set of issues fit into how Germans' views of the US have evolved? Well, we, are, uh, we want to be equal partners, but we are not equal, of course. Even the United States is a superpower, uh, plays a leading role in the world. Germany doesn't have a different understanding of itself. Uh, Germany is a middle power, uh, and we do not want to copy the type of leadership that the U.S. Uh, is um, uh, practicing. Uh, in the world, in the Western world, uh, we have a different concept uh, and we have different strengths. Um, why do we have a problem now? I mean, it is not only the NSA revelations, it is also the Iraq war, uh, it is Guantanamo, uh, and it is NSA uh, that uh, created a certain distance uh, between Germany and the U.S. There, is, um, there are people, uh, many people, uh, uh, who believe that um, uh, you know, the, the, the friendship and the acceptance of the USA uh, uh, has uh, uh, declined uh, during the last years. And that is uh, a serious problem uh, because uh, that also has an impact on current problems on current projects uh, of the two countries. For example, or between Europe and the US, for example, it does have a negative impact on TTIP. There is uh, uh, a, a, a lot of mistrust uh, against uh, US uh, policy. So we have to work on that. It is uh, something that we cannot neglect and just, you know, ignore it. It doesn't go away by itself. Uh, uh, I don't know if that is the same situation in other European countries, but we do have anti-Americanism on the extreme left wing and exactly uh, at the same mm -hmm. time on the extreme right wing. Uh, we have to stabilize uh, the center left and the, the center right, uh, that we have a, a, a good relation to the United States. Uh, but um, it, is, um, it worries me that uh, uh, on both uh, uh, sides of our political uh, specter, we have uh, problems. Yeah, well, let's, I mean, let's talk about the, the political situation, because I think that's probably very important, you know, also for, for people across the Atlantic to understand how this fits into politics here. Um, 2015 is a quiet year, electorally, but 2016, there are some major uh, state elections, 2017, obviously the federal election. Um, uh, these days, uh, with those uh, uh, Sigmar uh, Gabriel quotes that I just read earlier, there's um, a lot of people recalling the 2002 election when Gerhard Schröder of the SPD uh, won in large part thanks to his uh, uh, serious opposition to the Iraq war. Um, as the elections approach, should we expect more anti-American rhetoric in, in Germany? And do you expect it to creep more into mainstream political discussion? I don't think so. And we have to watch out that we don't mix up things. Uh, if, if, for example, the NSA uh, would help the BND 
possible to, to spy on uh, US companies uh, and to spy on uh, US politicians or on Canadian politicians like, you know, like uh, uh, the, fr the French politicians are uh, spied on possibly by, uh, by, the, Germ by the BND um, NSA cooperation. If that would happen, uh, you would, uh, of course, uh, not accept that. You would say, what's going on? It is our uh, foreign intelligence service helps uh, 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 a foreign intelligence service to, to spy out our people and our companies. Uh, and uh, I mean, that is a problem that has to be uh, clarified. And that is, if you criticize uh, a situation of that kind, it is not anti-American rhetoric. I would say that is uh, a legitimate criticism. That is a problem that has to be solved in our parliament, and we will be able to do that. I mean, um, uh, our intelligence service uh, uh, did obviously have problems in the cooperation with NSA, and uh, uh, obviously the BND was not able to report these problems uh, to its own leadership or to the chancellery or uh, to the parliament, uh, but that was um, required by the law. And now we have to uh, investigate and find out what really happened. Then, then we have to draw uh, conclusions and we will have consequences and we will have a reform of the BND. And at the same time, we have to continue that dialogue mm -hmm. uh, with the United States about um, uh, uh, rules for, our, for the cooperation of our intelligence services. But, but I mean, is there not a um, political narrative developing here of will Angela Merkel stand up to the Americans? I mean, do, do you see that? And do, do you see that as a, as a potent uh, issue politically? in the next few months? You mean Angela Merkel uh, being the ally of the US yes. and uh, the other ones uh, are the, uh, no, we would not accept that d division of labor, no way. Uh, I believe in that close partnership with the US. Uh, we, we are not just friends, uh, we, we share values uh, and basic values, uh, freedom, uh, democracy, uh, the rule of law. Uh, uh, the, the, the rule that, that every uh, body has a right uh, to live a life in dignity and, uh, uh, and that we have political systems that can correct uh, problems, that can react to, uh, to negative developments and that can change things. We all were enthusiastic about uh, the electoral vote for Barack Obama. We thought a new age uh, mm -hmm. would, uh, would start. We were uh, a little bit uh, um, uh, ernüchtert. Uh, sober. Yeah, sober. sober. Now we are a little yeah. more sober, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I still uh, believe that uh, Barack Obama was a positive factor in the German-American relations. What would you like the U.S. to do? What does Washington need to do? Oh, yeah. oh I think actually my cell phone is yeah. also on. No, my, I, I don't have it handy, sorry. Uh, that <laughs> must have been the answer. <laughs> and what, what does the U.S. need to do to improve things? Be more uh, sensitive uh, and accept that uh, the cooperation of uh, secret uh, intelligence services uh, need to be regulated in a democratic way. Uh, as I said, uh, we cannot empower our intelligence services to, uh, to survey uh, private communication uh, without limitations. Uh, that is not in uh, accordance uh, with the requirements of uh, rule of law. So. Uh, we do have to uh, clarify with the U.S. what uh, uh, the, the NSA is allowed to do in Germany and what they are not allowed to do. Uh, that can be regulated, uh, no problem. And that uh, uh, is a very important thing. And I believe that, uh, you know, if we succeed in uh, negotiating successfully the, 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 uh, the uh, T, uh, T, uh, TTIP, the T, uh, TTIP, 
uh, that is a great step forward uh, that uh, would mean that we are able in the uh, uh, so far largest market of the world that we are able to establish standards uh, that uh, meet the needs of our people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is not Asia or other regions of the world uh, with uh, less democratic and, and, and less uh, 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 controlled uh, governments uh, like ours, uh, that they are the ones who uh, determine uh, according to what rules we will have trade in the future. So how do you assess support right now for TTIP in, in your party and in the yes. Bundestag? Yes, uh, we, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, criticism. Uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, the, the leading uh, social democrats work hard uh, to make uh, TTIP possible. Um, we do need some changes, of course. I mean, uh, the um, uh, investor <coughs> uh, trade um, dispute settlement must be changed. We believe that uh, Europe and the US could afford an international trade uh, court of Trade, uh, 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 publicly uh, regulated um, uh, type of uh, uh, dispute settlement uh, that um, is not uh, a, a private institution. Very many people in Germany are afraid of uh, uh, being confronted with the uh, uh, private uh, um, um, arbitration and, and, and at the end that would uh, put pressure on on our democratic um, uh, institutions to um, to regulate things in accordance with what the private um, arbitration bodies tell us. I mean, we believe in the uh, that the democratic institutions must have a primary uh, say in what uh, uh, is. Uh, uh, what has to happen in our country. And when you look at public opinion, when you look at the voters, how big of a hindrance is the NSA issue in, in, in getting TTIP done? I, I don't believe that the NSA issue uh, is really a concern for everybody in this country. Uh, very many people uh, ignore uh, the, the, the debate about uh, the NSA activities. Uh, uh, very many people hand out their private uh, data to Google uh, and to Facebook uh, without any hesitation. Uh, and uh, so there is um, a little bit uh, uh, like uh, uh, many people uh, have a, uh, a diff uh, have a, a, a double mind, uh, have a double mind standards. in that question, have double standards. Uh, but it is serious. I mean, uh, despite this, uh, uh, these double um, uh, standards, uh, it is a serious problem. Uh, and uh, I believe uh, the, the whole political class is involved in that uh, debate. Uh, and that is why I believe uh, we, cannot, uh, 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 we cannot ignore it, but it will not decide about the outcome of the next election. Okay. And um, you, you mentioned German leadership at, at one point, and I want to zoom out uh, and, and talk about that real quick. And then you'll let me know when we go to the audience yeah. uh, for questions. Um, great. So um, Germany, uh, and you hear it here in Berlin more and more, uh, uh, politicians and, and the elites are talking about it's time for Germany to take responsibility in world affairs. Um, the Ukraine crisis is widely seen as an example of Germany actually showing yeah. Uh, leadership on, on security uh, or foreign policy issues. But you also still hear the, the, the criticism abroad that when it comes to something that has to do with security, uh, uh, German politics has a very hard time um, uh, addressing that in a, a serious way. I mean, and, you know, of course, what you hear from Washington a lot in the context of the uh, NSA response the last two years has been how can the Germans be so naive? Spy agencies spy on everyone. That's their job. So how would you put uh, German leadership on, in foreign policy and security issues in the context of the re reaction to the NSA revelations? Can, can Germany lead when 
uh, uh, as long as intelligence remains such a touchy subject here domestically? I think we have a consensus, uh, a broad consensus in Germany that Germany has to take up more responsibility. Uh, but that does not mean that uh, uh, Germany will be a, a, a military power. Uh, I mean, we have to accept uh, leadership uh, as the uh, strongest, economically strongest country within the European Union. We are the country with the largest population. We have to accept uh, a leadership role. But this type of leadership uh, is different from what uh, the US government uh, understands um, uh, uh, under leadership. I mean, our strength is not that we are military power. Our strength is not that we have a huge uh, intelligence machine surveying uh, all the uh, situations in the world. Our strength is we, we are economically strong. We, are, we have a strong economy, innovative economy. Our strength is that we have um, a, a very good reputation in the international community. There is a lot of trust uh, in Germany. And that is why uh, we are strong in diplomatic, in the diplomatic area. Germany is uh, a country that um, is able to de-escalate international conflicts. Uh, and uh, that is uh, why I would say we have a division of labor and everybody should put his talents. Uh, and we, we have to uh, combine our talents. For example, Germany's role in the, uh, in the conflict uh, between Russia and Ukraine. Um, together with France, we, we have worked hard to settle that conflict. We have not yet succeeded, but uh, we have avoided that uh, it uh, became a huge military conflict between Ukraine and Russia. So uh, I think uh, that uh, the diplomatic uh, role of our chancellor and of uh, Frank-Walter Steinmeier mm -hmm. helped a lot. And uh, so far, uh, I mean, we do not believe in delivering uh, military weapons to Ukraine, as many congressmen in the US uh, would like to see. Uh, we do not believe that this conflict can be resolved uh, with military means. It can only be resolved by, with political means, and that is our strength. So uh, that is also, but we are not naive. I mean, uh, we, do, we do know that the Western um, uh, alliance, that NATO and uh, European Union are dependent on defense. If it is necessary, we need a strong defense. And uh, that is uh, why we try to uh, reform our army so that we can contribute to uh, that uh, what, what is necessary within the alliance. We do that with a, a rapid uh, deployment force uh, that uh, was uh, installed after uh, the, uh, the annexation of the uh, uh, Krim. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and uh, so uh, I, I think uh, let's talk about that again five years from now. Uh, what happened in Eastern Europe, uh, if we are successful in our way uh, or if not? <laughs> uh, uh, so far, uh, it is hard to tell. It is, it is a, very, uh, a very complicated work, uh, but um, uh, uh, there is no simple solution. And as Germany uh, gains this role, as you see more self-confidence on the international stage, does that, nece does that necessitate a distancing from the U.S.? Is no, no. I, I do not uh, uh, believe that we have to actively uh, 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 work on, on, on a distance to the U.S. We, we have to be uh, uh, str uh, close allies and we have to uh, cooperate closely. Uh, that is uh, what I believe in. Uh, uh, but we need an understanding of uh, what everybody's, uh, what, what the two roles are. We have different roles. Uh, we share uh, the same values, but we have different uh, political systems. We have different uh, approaches mm -hmm. uh, to problems. 
uh, we have a different philosophy in, in uh, what, uh, what international policy um, uh, should be like, uh, but uh, uh, that is why we very uh, congenial partners. We could, uh, as I said, put together our talents, but they will be different. And last question before I go to the audience. <laughs> uh, why should Americans care about uh, what we're talking about here? Wh why should Americans care that Germans are upset at uh, U.S. Uh, activities here? Well, uh, the, which is a question if, that if a lot of US, our readers ask. If, if the U.S. was seeking for a partner that would be just like the USA, uh, they would not be successful if they look in Europe. Uh, so. Europe is something different, but Europe is, uh, shares the same history, the same culture in many ways with the U.S. Uh, and uh, what else? Who should the U.S., uh, what uh, would be the alternative for the U.S. Uh, to uh, uh, ignore uh, Europe uh, and Germany and the other European countries? Uh, that would be isolationism. I mean, at the end, it would be that the, the U.S. probably can survive without Europe. Um, uh, but uh, I don't uh, believe that at the end uh, the U.S. Uh, would prosper so well without strong partners in Europe uh, who work on, uh, on rules uh, in the world um, in which we could develop uh, in a fair and uh, strong manner. Thank you. So, do we have questions in the audience? Please introduce yourself. Okay, I'll just make the icebreaker. Christoph von Marshall from uh, Tagesspiegel. Um, I, I have two questions. The first uh, is a request to clarify a little bit how you see how concerned Germans are, because it seemed to me that there were a little discrepancy between your two statements. At the beginning, you said in explaining why Americans should understand how they should, well, people are very concerned and it's history and secret services and so on. And later you said, well, NSA is not a concern for many people in Germany. So uh, which of the two um, is it? I think the second statement is closer to, uh, to reality because most public polls show that even three quarters of the Germans say it's not a major concern for them. And it might, it might uh, turn into the impression that this is a so-called scandal of the political class a certain level of journalists and uh, professional politicians, but the public doesn't care. And if that is so, it might become a problem for your party if you force the issue too much. It might boomerang when we now see that Steinmeier and Gabriel have different perspectives. So just clarify this, this first thing. And the second question is, do we really know whether the BND helped the NSA to spy on companies? Where's the difference between spying on companies or gathering general economic information. As far as I have heard, people who, ha who have an insight say we have no proof that anybody spied on companies. It is just general gathering of economic uh, information. But of course, I don't know. So what, what do you know? Where, where, <laughs> where do you make the difference between the two? I have no uh, uh, proof for uh, economic uh, spying. Uh, what we know is that uh, the NSA obviously tried to get information about the communication of uh, uh, Airbus uh, and uh, maybe Siemens. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, there is no uh, uh, direct spying uh, in the company, for example. They do not tap uh, the telephone line of these companies. At least we don't know. I mean, that, that is not what, uh, what uh, 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 that is not the allegation or the accusation. Uh, but if you, for example, I mean, uh, 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 spy on the uh, uh, international uh, telephone communication, for example, uh, and uh, you find out uh, what the uh, what the negotiations between Qatar and uh, and Airbus about uh, uh, the, uh, the selling of uh, uh, 20 new Airbuses uh, uh, is like, that is an, a highly interesting information. 
uh, for example, and uh, that might not be economic spying, but uh, that uh, could harm the company very, uh, very, uh, very hard. So um, it is very difficult to define what is economic spying. So nobody uh, uh, says that uh, the NSA tries to find out uh, s secrets of the company. Uh, things like that. Uh, but if companies are in the uh, realm of uh, surveillance, it is a problem. And we have to talk about that problem, and it creates a lot of uh, mistrust. And uh, the two attitudes uh, I had in my statement are both representing the German ad attitude. I think. Uh, 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 it is like, uh, I mean, there, um, of course, many people um, ignore that and uh, are not interested in details about uh, this scandal, um, but um, they are not interested in other issues either. Uh, I mean, uh, so <coughs> uh, they are uh, 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 distant uh, to politics. And others uh, think it's a serious problem. I mean, what we have to think about is um, in the digital uh, 21st century, uh, we have now no competitive uh, um, uh, uh, rules. No, uh, uh, our law did not develop as fast as the digital communication. Uh, like in Germany, uh, our, our basic <coughs> law provides human rights for our citizens and uh, that worked well. But the human rights touch the borders of our jurisdiction. I mean, because the digital communication is global, is international, we are a global village, but we do not have international standards for human rights, for digital human rights. And I think it is uh, uh, definitely a job of uh, leading countries in Europe and the US to develop those standards for human rights in the digital world. And they will be different. I think it, uh, you will probably have at the end not the same protection that you have for letters in, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the old world. But let me, let uh, me follow up on, on Christoph's question real quick, which is uh, I, I, uh, I ran into a senior green uh, politician yesterday on the street and asked him this very question, well, how much do people care? And he said, well, you know, even in the election campaign, we sort of realized that this idea of NSA surveillance in itself is not something that's going to really mobilize voters. But now, what could mobilize voters is the supposition that Angela Merkel is submissive to the U.S. in some way that Germany is not, uh, uh, she's not allowing Germany to be an equal partner to the US. Do you see that? I mean, do you, do you see this becoming a bigger issue going forward? Do you see a vulnerability for, for her on that score? Actually, no. Uh, because, I mean, a German chancellor should not be submissive to anybody. Um, uh, that is no problem that we have uh, specifically with the United States. Um, we are a sovereign state. We are uh, integrated in close partnerships, uh, and we should be able to speak out and to defend the uh, uh, interests of our citizens. That is uh, the natural mm -hmm. uh, task of a government. And so I would not, I would, I do not believe that. Uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, anti-Americanism or whatever plays a significant role. Okay. Hello, my name is uh, Marco Overhaus. I work for the Stiftung Wissenschaft und Politik uh, here in Berlin. And I have a question uh, to Mr. Oppermann relating to uh, yeah, the relationship between the German government and the population. I mean, the issue of German leadership and foreign policy was already discussed, but leadership also relates internally to, to the population. So my question is this. Uh, Mr. Oppermann, do you think that the German government, and that is, applies also to the social democratic ministers, has done a bad job to explain you know, the dependencies, the necessities, the 
the issues, the requirements of intelligence cooperation properly to a German audience. I mean, we've been debating a lot about what went wrong, and we did that rightly, because there are issues. But if, if there is a lack of understanding of the uh, benefits or the need of US-German intelligence cooperation, maybe the German government didn't do a very good job to explain it to the population, because obviously uh, it's not very popular. So maybe the government had good reason to shy away from it. Um, do you share that perspective? Do you see a, a need to improve this also? I mean, that is a, a good point. Um, it is true that uh, nobody really wants to touch that issue. Uh, it is not sympathetic. Uh, uh, but we need indeed more explanation. I mean, not even very many uh, members of the Bundestag do understand how the secret intelligence services uh, function and what they do and how they work. All what they know is uh, when there is a problem. Then the, uh, it, it is a you have a scandalized uh, report on those things. So the, uh, the perception is purely negative. I mean, uh, they, they appeared just as a problem. Uh, almost uh, never you, you hear positive things about uh, these institutions. That is a fundamental problem in our democratic state. Uh, I think these institutions must have a, a fair judgment. Uh, and uh, most of the people who work in these uh, institutions are loyal uh, uh, to democracy and they, they uh, of course, abide the law. Uh, and they do uh, very valuable work, uh, but uh, uh, the perception of their institution is uh, almost only negative, and that is a serious problem uh, in recruiting uh, uh, good qualified personnel. Other questions? Mr. Rinke. Andreas Rinke from Reuters. I have actually two questions, Mr. Oppermann. One is uh, to proceed on this direction. You said we want to be equal partners, but we are not equal. I would like to know, do you see any areas where we could get more equal to the United States? So should we invest more in secret services, for example, or in military? Or do the United States engage and develop new strengths in other fields where you mentioned that Germany is strong? And the second question is, um, do you think that your party, the Social Democrats, have a special task or challenge in keeping the right balance to the United States? There was a discussion about equidistance between Russia and the United States. Is that a particular problem of the Social Democrats? I don't believe in equal distance. <clears throat> I mean, uh, we, we should um, develop our partnerships um, based on our values and in our interests. It is legitimate to pursue interests. Uh, and uh, that has to uh, uh, happen on the basis of values. And if you do that, uh, we have uh, a lot of interest um, in re-establishing a, a good friendship and a cooperative relationship to Russia. There is no doubt about that. Uh, we need Russia for, uh, uh, for the solution of many international conflicts. For example, Iranian, the Iranian conflict that is uh, uh, close to uh, a solution. And um, uh, even Syria, for example. Uh, nothing uh, was or could be done um, in, the, in the Syrian uh, civil war uh, because uh, there was a blockade in, in the UN Security Council. So Russia is needed also for uh, peace and stability and uh, wealth in Europe. So we want that partnership and we believe that uh, Russia should return to the G8. Uh, but uh, uh, that is not possible as long we have that conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, Russia has to uh, return to, to uh, international law 
and uh, then uh, we, uh, we have a perspective for the future. With the US, we have a completely different relationship uh, that I would not compare with, with Russia. I mean, we are democratic countries. And uh, we also have uh, a lot of uh, uh, interests that we share, but we also have different roles, of course. That has to be accepted. But we believe uh, in, in strong economy. We believe in, um, uh, that we have to um, regulate reasonably the global markets. And um, uh, we also work on progress in the world. I mean, uh, in Asia, China, Russia uh, uh, are not the type of democracy we are used to. China is a communist dictatorship uh, combined with the free uh, capitalism. And Russia is, uh, uh, however you want to call that, they do have elections, but it is not a uh, 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 democracy uh, of, the, uh, of a similar quality uh, to what we are used to in Europe. Uh, so, I mean, in this world, uh, we will be partners. And uh, this partnership uh, has to be renewed uh, uh, by every generation uh, that is uh, uh, necessary. I, th I don't think that it will um, live on by itself. Uh, it takes a lot of work to do that. And in a serious period like this, we have uh, to work on that uh, a lot more. So do you expect, to follow up on Andreas's question, do, do you expect uh, in the next election the CDU and the SPD to have more or less the same view on, on the U.S.? You mean within, after the next election? Uh, in the campaign. In the campaign. I, the campaign. Yeah. I don't think that the, the, the relation to the U.S. will be, uh, play a significant role in the next election campaign. Unless uh, there is a new war that is coming up, and we have uh, differences about that, but uh, I hope uh, that uh, will not happen. Other questions? Yes. Uh, there was a second question. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. If you want to invest more in yeah. secret services or military, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, let's put it that way. I mean, uh, we cannot substitute, uh, uh, we, we need to invest more money. Uh, first of all, we have to be more effective with the money we have already invested. We need effective uh, intelligence services, uh, but we will not be able to substitute by our own additional investments what we uh, uh, achieve uh, by international cooperation uh, with the European and the US uh, services. I mean, that cannot be substituted. Germany can never have uh, uh, um, uh, an intelligence service uh, that uh, is strong enough to um, um, provide us with the necessary information. We need the partnership. Please. My name is Johannes Tim. I'm also with Stiftung Wissenschaft und Politik. I have a bit of a provocative question. We always say that uh, the transatlantic relationship is a security community. It's a community of shared values. We share values like democracy, rule of law, uh, free markets. Now, if intelligence agencies overstep, get out of control, that sort of affects all three of those common values. Without transparency, no accountability. So if they operate in secret, you cannot control them dem democratically. Um, we know that intelligence agencies don't care about the laws of other countries. Whether they care about the laws of their own countries is an open question in my mind. Um, and we know that we were talking about economic espionage earlier. That is something that, accept, uh, that affects the free market and uh, fair competition on the free market. So at what point does this sort of behavior that we've learned about through the Snowden revelations and now also through other sources become a problem for this transatlantic community, for the community of values? When is the point reached where it's possibly not a community of values anymore? Or it's a, a community, but the, both sides are not adhering to, the, adhering to their own values. 
Well, it already is a problem. <laughs> um, even though it is uh, primarily a potential problem. Because the people in the US and in Europe do not have the feeling that their freedom is extremely restricted. That they, uh, 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 for example, that they uh, have a daily um, attack of uh, the NSA. Uh, and uh, that they do not leave their home uh, or that they do not turn on their computer. Their, uh, a tablet uh, because the NSA is just about to uh, attack uh, the communication. That is not the case. So uh, there is not a, a, a subjective uh, feeling of, uh, of a strong uh, limitation of their freedom. But as our president said, uh, that um, uh, who does have quite uh, 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 specific life experience uh, in, in uh, systems with extreme surveillance, he said, well, if the people believe that uh, they are under survey, uh, if they uh, have the feeling that uh, um, uh, they are spied on, they uh, start to adjust their personal behavior. And that is already the first limitation of freedom. And if that is the case, uh, 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 we do have a problem. And I do not want people uh, to adjust their behavior to potential surveillance. So uh, we have to work on that. I mean, uh, I believe that uh, uh, the, uh, you cannot just say everybody is spying. And uh, of course, there is uh, spying in all countries, and every country is active in spying. But we talk about something different. This is a systematic uh, uh, approach to uh, get a hold of the worldwide um, co digital communication, the private communication, the political communication, and business communication. I mean, uh, the, the, the approach of the NSA is, is quite um, uh, in a dimension, I would say, it is huge, and maybe someday the NSA will uh, even um, uh, uh, will be even in a in a dead end road because uh, they cannot handle that mountainous um, volume of uh, big data that they have gathered in the world. Maybe I don't I don't know that might happen. I don't know. Uh, but um, I do not want that people in the digital 21st century uh, are, feel that they are uh, not free. They must have the feeling that they must feel secure and they, they uh, uh, must have the feeling that they can rely on that not at least their own uh, foreign uh, intelligence uh, agency is not helping others to spy on them. Now, the, the very latest uh, issue that's leading to transatlantic frictions is whether or not uh, the government will show parliament or a trusted person of parliament this list of thousands of controversial search terms or selectors uh, uh, that the BND executed on behalf of the NSA. Do you have any clarity for us on, on whether or not that will happen? Not today, but uh, in the near future we will have uh, clarity about that. Uh, actually, I, I'm pretty uh, 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 optimistic that in the next uh, uh, session week uh, we will have a, uh, an agreement between Parliament and the government uh, about this question. Uh, I am confident that we will find appropriate, uh, an, uh, an appropriate procedure uh, to get the information for the Parliament. That does not mean that those lists have to be handed over. Uh, uh, they are a secret, and we have to respect that uh, secrecy. Uh, but uh, the parliament uh, must know uh, what, um, uh, what kind of selectors uh, were uh, applied. Otherwise, we would not be able to uh, come to a political, to a precise and correct political assessment. But the political assessment uh, is uh, necessary for political reforms and uh, the parliament has to uh, uh, 
do its uh, job. Uh, we have to control the government, but we do not want uh, to raise security problems. So we have to find an appropriate way, and I'm sure we will be successful. Okay. More questions? Seems there are no more questions. So let me get up again. <laughs> and sorry, sorry about that. Here? Okay. We still need to train this. Thank you very much for a very thoughtful, sophisticated, deep and insightful conversation about very tricky issues. It's keeping at least part of the German public excited, um, if not all of them. <laughs> But it is exactly this what we would like to achieve with the, tra with the transatlantic talks, is to have a civilized dialogue among two partner countries. So on behalf of all of us at GMF, thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for your questions. And um, thank you also for staying a little while and join us at the s for some drinks and snacks, which are, which are over there. So thank you very, very much. <laughs> okay, sorry, and those flowers are not for you, I, had, I hate to say, but thank you very much. Um, uh, yes, my name is Astrid Siebert and I'm working here at the German Marshall Fund and you are part actually of a historic moment. Um, as this was the last um, event that Heike McCarran organized with the German Marshall Fund as an office director and we're really, really grateful for all the work. We have heard the words of we need to cooperate, problems, what are our values? Um, you have really dedicated your life, the past over 20 years, to this mission and have really, I think, really impacted the transatlantic relations. I don't know what will happen tomorrow when you're not here anymore. <laughs> um, we will see. But thank you so much, Heike. And join me, please, in giving her a round of applause for all her service. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, this for you. Very, very much. Don't be afraid. No speech from me. Thank you all again. Thank you, Mr. Oppermann. Thank you, Mr. Tarnowski. And let's have a drink. Thank you. Thank you.